So what do you call yourself? Antonio Montana. And you? What you call yourself? By now, you've faced the Borg. The Collective is appearing with more frequency in the Alpha Quadrant now, and Defera is facing repeated attacks. We've been able to push them back so far, but we can't do it forever, not without help. Starfleet has convinced representatives from the Klingon Empire, the Cardassians, and the Deferi to meet on Deep Space Nine. We want you to be there as well. DS9. I'm Commander Karen Andrews, Captain Carlin's first officer. He asked me to inform you that he's been delayed dealing with an incident in Cargo Bay 3. I'm looking forward to the conference and what your government has to say about the Borg. While I agree the Borg are indeed a threat, I'm not entirely clear as to what you expect the Ditapa Council to do about it. If you will remember, we dismantled our military after the Dominion War and only maintain a small force for planetary defense. Those ships you may have seen were stolen from my government by the true way. Regrettably, Starfleet has yet to put a stop to their campaign of terror. Being here on Deep Space Nine reminds me of my mentor, Gul Mavek, who was stationed here during the Dominion occupation. During his time here, he came across a peculiar drink, Bajoran Distilled Canar. Apparently, during the Cardassian occupation, the soldiers wanted their favorite libation, but there was not enough canar in the shipments from home. So these resourceful young officers conscripted a group of Bajorans, mostly from the religious houses, to distill canar for them. The canar from Bajor has a different color and flavor from the best Cardassian vintages because of the local ingredients used in its distillation. Nevertheless, many of the officers who drank it developed quite a taste for this Bajoran pleasure. It is impossible to find a similar vintage on Cardassia Prime, and I want to present a bottle to my mentor and friend, Gul Mavek, upon my return to the homeworld. It would mean so much to him, and I would be most grateful to anyone who could assist me in this small task. Ben, I was so pleased when I heard that you would be attending the conference as well. Without your assistance, my people would have fallen to the Breen. Now we are following your example and offering what assistance we can to help deal with the Collective. I feel some sympathy for the Borg. Their quest for this so-called perfection has led them away from balance. But they're victims. My people. The Borg must be stopped. I look forward to hearing your ideas or stand. I must find something to do with my free time. I had been hoping to spend some time in one of the hollow suites here. Several people have recommended them, and there is an historical hollow program the Matara Nebula that I have been eager to play. Could you help me gain access to a hollow suite? An hour or two would be more than sufficient. Greetings. I'm Captain Valkel Sean. I've heard a lot about you. It's good to finally meet. I'm glad there's someone else here who's faced the Borg in battle. We have a perspective the rest of these full-time diplomats don't. I hope the problem's not too serious. That's unfortunate. I was hoping to get some assistance from DS9 to deal with some issues on my ship. We've been on deep space patrols for more than a month, and this is the first chance we've had to get back to a real starbase. 
My ship needs repairs, and I'm running out of spit and wishes to hold her together. Ah, I was informed you would be here. Have you come with another friendly reminder from Commander Andrews? Feel free to report back to her and let her know that I haven't eaten the furniture or scared away the Dabo players. Not yet, anyway. That is troubling. My ship is waiting to return to Kronos as soon as these talks are completed. I have no wish to linger here any longer than is necessary. Sorry to trouble you again, but Captain Curlin is wrapping up the problem in the cargo bay, and we will be able to begin the talks very soon. I've notified the other attendees, but our opening speaker isn't responding to hails. Could you please track him down for me? Admiral Zavglach Trem mentioned wanting some place quiet. You might try the upper promenade or the temple. Apologies, both to you and Commander Andrews. It's not often that I get some time to myself these days. Captain Curland offered me the use of his office, but I came here instead for some peace and quiet. Peace. It's in far too short of supply these days. I've been in Starfleet for a long time. I've seen more battles than I care to remember. But this one, there's no reasoning with the Borg. There's no chance for a non-violent solution. I only hope that we can unite before they come for us. No one is safe. Welcome, everyone. I'm so pleased that you all agreed to join us here today. As many of you are all too aware, the Borg attacks are increasing. If they are left unchecked, Starfleet predicts that the entire Alpha Quadrant could fall within three years. We all must work together to push these invaders out of our space and protect our homes and families. I do not agree. My empire will stand, with or without your assistance. The Klingon Empire has never been stronger than it is right now. I dare the Borg to challenge us. Starfleet may cower in fear before a bunch of machines, but we do not. I'm sure what the esteemed ambassador from the Klingon Empire meant to say is that he hopes we are all so crippled by our efforts to stop the Borg, we will be no match for a battle-hardened Klingon fleet. I do not want to be assimilated, but I don't want to be a servant to the Klingon Empire either. The Deferi believe that all things must be in balance. We cannot counter the Borg threat if we ourselves are counter to one another. The Deferi do not wish to act against any of you. Therefore, should this meeting not reach a consensus, our best course of action is to not act at all. Starfleet will do what it must to protect the Federation. However, if you want our assistance, you need to be willing to protect yourselves and contribute to this campaign. The Borg will be stronger if any of your civilizations are assimilated. Starfleet's hard at work developing new technology and tactics. We, at least, will be ready. And if we can't cooperate, I hope you don't suffer. And that we develop new weapons in time. This is getting us nowhere. We came together in the spirit of cooperation. We need to find common ground. Now, did you have something you wanted to add to this discussion? Cardassia Prime is still rebuilding from the Dominion War. We have achieved a great deal in the past decades, but there is still much more to do. The continued threat of the true way makes progress difficult. It would be best if we reserve our limited resources. 
I will not weaken my world to defeat the Borg, only to become the victim of another power already here in the Alpha Quadrant. I see your point. If we work together, we can spread the risks of fighting the Borg, while at the same time creating a unified force that is more likely to succeed. Cardassia's odds of survival will be greatly improved if we add our strength to yours. Careful. You are dangerously close to insulting the honor of the Cleon Empire. Do not presume to know what our honor demands. The Empire's pursuit of honor does not mean we are compelled to fight other people's battles. Do not dictate strategy to me. The Klingon Empire values strength. We stepped in to defend the Deferi once because we owe them a debt of honor. We owe you nothing. Now, did you have something you wanted to add to this discussion? Maintaining balance with all things must be our primary concern. My world is one of those at risk, but I cannot reject balance, even to save my home and people. The universe uses conflict to restore the balance when we move too far out of equilibrium. The Borg advance, as painful as it may be, is simply another adjustment. Balance comes in many forms. It may be our time to depart this universe and make way for others as others have done before. If it is, so be it. We will protect what we can of our culture and knowledge for those who come after, as the Preservers did for us. Starfleet will do everything we can to protect the Federation and its allies. However, there are too many drains on our resources and a limited number of ships and officers. It may be simply unfeasible for us to sign on to be the protector of the entire Alpha Quadrant. Besides, we need to consider the Prime Directive there are limits to what we can do. Under dire circumstances, Starfleet may be forced to pull back from protecting all life to a position where we can defend only the core worlds. I hope it doesn't come to that. If it does, however, the needs of the many must outweigh the needs of the few. Starfleet recognizes the Borg threat in all life in the Alpha Quadrant. We've lost too much already. We cannot lose anymore. Eventually, we'll all need to put our differences aside and unite in opposition to the Borg or anyone else who sows chaos and destruction. We'll put an end to this together. Let's take a quick recess to cool off. That's funny. I don't remember anyone being scheduled to fly through the wormhole today. There's something coming out of the wormhole. Captain, it's a Dominion fleet. They're charging weapons. Red alert. to get out of here! <gasps> it is time to leave. Evac Protocol Alpha. Andrews, get everyone to shuttles. Prep the Defiant for launch. 
I'll... Blast it! The Jemadar have cut off access to ops. Karen, you'll need to coordinate the evacuation. We'll get the delegates to the docking ring, and then I'll try to join you in ops. Captain Carland, good to know that you and the delegates are safe. Jim Hadar have stormed the station and we're losing critical areas. The Defiant has launched and I've evacuated everyone possible, but a few of us stayed to- <laughs> Andrews? Andrews? Someone, answer me! What's going on? Captain, my name is Loris, and I represent the Dominion. This station and all remaining souls on it are now under our control. 